Hello. Uh, I updated my home studio. You want to see it? And let the tour begin. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just push this camera out as far as I can. I have very short arms, sorry about that. But this is my studio in its entirety. So it's not a very big room, it's probably a, uh, I don't know, a 15 by 15 standard room. But, uh, but this is my space. There's my main desk that I work at and edit uh, and film. And there is my main light over here. Uh, I'll get to all the details in a bit, but definitely much better than the first time I tried setting up this studio. I just didn't really have a clue of what to do, but after getting some advice from Becky and Chris and looking at my other friend's YouTube setup, this is definitely an upgrade to what I had before. Okay, let's start with my desktop area. So uh, the main computer that I use, can you see me? So the main computer that I've been using for uh, quite some time now is the 2018 MacBook Pro. Attached to my MacBook Pro is this Thunderbolt 3 cable, which connects to this monitor, which is my brand new favorite monitor that I've been using, and that's the BenQ PD something. I don't know the exact model number, but it's the uh, the graphic designer version. And uh, what I love about this monitor is that it's so color accurate. That's one thing, but also, there's this uh, physical dial that you can use to enable low light mode so that you don't have that blue light emitting from the screen. Um, so if you're working in the morning, you can turn on this mode and it'll warm up the screen. And if you're editing during the day, just press one of the buttons and there you go. And also there's a dial over here. And so if you wanna tune down the brightness, you totally can. Instead of like the monitors where you have to press the menu and, and touch the buttons and then, you know, do your adjustments there. Having this little physical module is just way easier, which is why I absolutely love this monitor. I have not done a review on this monitor. I just realized I should probably work on that soon. But right next to the module is a wireless charger. And so if I need to charge my phone, then I can just put my iPhone right there and it just charges just like that simple. Whoa. So uh, here I have a, uh, an ordinary desk lamp, if you will. But what I like about this desk lamp is that there is a USB um, outlet so that I can charge uh, USB devices, just like the Aperture MX light right over here. And so uh, I like that a lot. In fact, that's already charged, so we don't need that there. But there's a USB uh, plug right there. So again, if I need to charge any devices uh, via USB, plug it in right over there. And yes, I do have my Philips Hue light strip and the Philips Hue light bulb over here so that I can change up light themes if I wanted to. All right, let's, uh, let's go ahead and flip this around because I'm gonna show you uh, my little filming spot. Right next to the desk is my main YouTube camera. That's the Sony a7 III and the Sony 24 to 70 G Master lens. On top of the a7 III is a, uh, a small multi-friction arm by Small Rig. And uh, the main mic that I use for my YouTube studio is the DD D3 Pro. I just leave that there and the Rode Video Mic Pro Plus is what I take with me when I vlog on location. Below the a7 III is a monitor by Feel World. It's not the best monitor at all. It's not even color accurate but I just use it as reference because the a7 III does not have a flip up screen. Yes, I did have an a6400. It was a perfect camera to film YouTube monologues, but I gave that camera away to a wonderful creator named Lydia. Now she has it and this camera I actually won from camera camp and so Thanks, Justine. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, now let's talk about my main light. So as I said before, the main light that I use is the Aperture 120D Mark II. And this big old dome is the Aperture Light Dome Mark II. So in this corner, I have two C-stands. Uh, this C-stand supports my Aperture 120D and the Light Dome Mark II. And uh, this C-stand, it's a Matthew C-stand, by the way, uh, that I just kind of keep there because sometimes I do overhead shots with a secondary camera or to hold up a light if I'm filming somewhere else in the room or if I need to take that on location. But uh, this is uh, a really, really, really good C-stand. It's not too heavy and it's uh, it looks cool. And, and I love, love the color. And of course, with every C-stand, you gotta have a sandbag because, you know, safety. And then you'll notice over here uh, on, the, on this wall and in the corner are these uh, sound panels. I got these from Amazon. I don't know if they actually work. I got them for super cheap, but I like to think that they work. Right next to the sound panels is a door and uh, I actually hang this Fernie pad over the door to add some more sound treatment, if you will, to this studio. And since this is a bedroom, if, uh, if a guest is coming over and staying over, that turns into a futon, I can just take out my Fernie pad and take out the stuff from the closet so that it's, uh, you know, 
a closet. And that's one way to have this room have multiple functions. If you add a couch, well, may as well have a futon bed so that if you do have guests, then they can come over and, and sleep on it. It's actually pretty comfortable. I've, I've slept on it many times. It's just that if I'm editing late, then sometimes I fall asleep there if I'm rendering. All right, let's switch it up over here to this side of the room. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but this is my long shelf where I add just decor. Here's a, a fake plant by Ikea, but you know, you gotta add some green to the room. Uh, here are some books that I've actually read. They're, they're all pretty awesome. I don't read that much, but when I do, then I like reading uh, these books to, to inspire me. Hey, you wanna see something else that's cool? Since I love Back to the Future, I've got little DeLoreans right over here next to the globe because Back to the Future is the best movie ever. Okay, the backpack wall, the infamous backpack wall. Uh, so these are the backpacks I like having just hung up on my wall. I have I have a lot of backpacks. In one of my last videos, I, I show you how many backpacks I actually do have. And so here is the primary backpack wall. They're all brevity bags. So that's, that's not by design. That's just, I just hung up some bags. And so I guess that's the brevity backpack wall. Behind my door, I got some more backpacks. I got the Wondered Provoke 21. This is the brevity roamer, no. Brevity Jumper, yeah, Brevity Jumper. And I've actually been using this backpack a lot because it's, it's, a, it's a really good everyday bag. And so I gotta make a video about that soon. And uh, here is, uh, is my closet. Uh, I have more bags here. This is my Tenba uh, 15 DNA Messenger bag. And I got the bigger Wandered Provoke. That's the 31 uh, liter version. And here is just random crap that I put in my closet as closets uh, are designed for. But uh, that's, uh, that's my closet. Hey. Question, are you one of these people? Because I freaking love just storing boxes of gear and just, I don't know, I don't know. Here, let's turn up the ISO. So I'm one of those people that just keeps boxes of different types of, of gear. And so if you are, let me know in the comments below because I want to give you a high five. If not, then uh, sorry to bother you. So there you go, closet. And uh, oh, and this thing over here. Uh, this is actually called a replica surface and uh, it's what I use to do product photography or to make thumbnails. It's this really cool surface that you can put, you know, whatever item you want and to do top down shots. I also got uh, other replica surfaces here that I didn't show you. Uh, I'm sure you've seen it before. We got a washed out wood version here. We got concrete. Uh, just other different textures and backgrounds. Pretty cool guys. They're based here in Dallas. And so uh, check them out if you can. The link will be in the description below. And then finally, one feature that I have in this room that I absolutely love and you haven't seen yet. You ready? I got a backdrop. Ooh. Now that actually was inspired by Gene, also known as Potato Jet. Uh, he has a really cool uh, YouTube studio where he has like, multiple backdrops, but I did want to have one because I wanted to utilize this space as much as I can. And so let me show you via time-lapse how I set this up. You can't see it, but there's a chain where I get to pull down the backdrop quite easily. Look at that. Look at that. Look how easy that was to set up. Oh man, and obviously I would have to light it properly, but you know, I could do, you know, different types of shoots if I needed a clear backdrop. And I've used this backdrop before to film those types of videos, but man, how easy was that? Here, let me, I don't know if you can actually see me. Oh, there we go. Okay, so the backdrop I actually got from B&H. Uh, I don't remember what color it was, but it was like a slate gray kind of color. And the backdrop hangers I actually got from Amazon. And so really I just found uh, where the studs were and then I screwed in the brackets onto the wall. I attached the backdrop to those brackets with the pull down chain and now I have a backdrop. And honestly, it's just my favorite multi-use function of this room. The fact that I have a backdrop in addition to a home YouTube studio in this tiny bedroom is, is some pretty boss level thinking right there not just a hat rack. It's actually a really great backdrop if you want to film clean product B-roll. So, oh, actually. Okay, let's go film some B-roll. And that is my YouTube home studio. What do you think? I think it's a major upgrade from when I first started. And so, I don't know, I like it. All right, well, I'm out of here. I gotta go film another YouTube video after filming this YouTube video. But thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.